How's everybody doing? It's really, it is wonderful to see all of you. Um, this is uh, the first uh, program that we've had back in person in the community room in quite a while. We did a few before the summer and then went into our summer reading where we had uh, hundreds of kids coming through doing activities, but it's really wonderful to see uh, everyone here today. And you're in for a, a treat with Chef Shannon. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to uh, say hi. I'm TJ, I'm the program coordinator. Um, and who, I'm just kind of curious, is there anyone, how many people is this maybe your first time to a library program? That's awesome. Welcome. We're happy to have you here. We've got a really great uh, program lined up. So if you haven't already got one, on the way out, grab one of our program guides. They're up on the wall over there. Uh, they're all the way through November. We'll tell you what we have going on. We've got great lineup of lectures, films, speakers. Uh, in fact, this Friday, uh, we have Ashley Weaver speaking, a uh, great author. And the first 200 people will uh, receive a free copy of her new book. So. Uh, if you're interested in that, be sure to arrive early, and it should be a really great talk. And we've got a whole lot of other good speakers and authors lined up in our Writers' Festival series, so we're excited about that this year. Um, but other than that, I just want to, again, say welcome and say thank you to our uh, foundation. All of our programming, for the most part, is funded through the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory Foundation. Without the support of the foundation and the donations that come in from people like you, uh, and from grants and all other kinds of sources that uh, fund that, we wouldn't be able to have the kind of great free library programming that we have. So uh, if you enjoy it, please think about uh, supporting the foundation with a donation. It's easy to do. You can do it online. Uh, we have a donation box in the back, or you can talk to any staff member. Um, but with that, I don't want to keep our program uh, from starting any longer here. We're really excited to have Chef Shannon back. She is, she is terrific. Uh, we did a Zoom program with her, and we, we couldn't, it was a year ago, which we were shocked when we were like, that was a year ago? Uh, so did anybody check that out? A few, yeah, so it was really great, um, and I think you're really gonna enjoy uh, doing it. If you have feedback too, we'd love to hear it, because this is the first time we've ever done this setup. So you're gonna be able to see everything going on on the big TVs here. Um, so even if you're you know not in the front row, you should be able to see pretty good. Uh, so we think this is gonna work pretty nice for the cooking demonstration, and. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. But also want to remind you that uh, next month, Shannon will be back on October 18th for uh, Asian Journey, and then in November, November 15th, for Americana Journey. Those are both Tuesdays at 2 p.m. But without further ado, I would like to go ahead and get started today and welcome Chef Shannon Bush. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I can't tell you how happy I am to be back and to have people in front of me. <laughs> Last fall was quite a challenge. I was here by myself, <laughs> looking at a camera with nobody to talk to, nobody to interact with. Um, so with that said, my favorite kind of class is a class where if I'm doing something and you have a question, just let me know. Speak up. Um, much more fun. I think it helps all of you, because if you have a question, probably someone else has that same question. So feel free to speak up as we go along. Uh, today's, or each of these three classes has a different theme. This one is going to be Mediterranean food. And I wanted to point out that uh, Mediterranean food, or that region of the world, is one of the blue zones. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, the library has these great books on hand if anybody wants to check them out. But these are places in the world where people live the longest. And what they all have in common is that their diets are based on plants. So it's a very interesting reading. This particular book I have at home, and it has um, recipes in it, lots of ideas on what to eat. And I'm going to make this fall over. Oh, sure. Uh, this one is the Blue Zones Kitchen, and then there's the original book, the, well, the Blue Zones Solution, but the library has all of these, so if it interests you, um, you can see them afterwards and maybe check them out. This one is a great book. It does have recipes. It has uh, ideas. It discusses um, what the main uh, food types are in these, these different regions. So everywhere from Japan to the Mediterranean area. And then, does anybody happen to know, we actually have a blue zone area right in our backyard here. Loma Linda, yes. 
Researchers come from all over the world to study the people in Loma Linda. They've eaten a plant-based diet for hundreds of years, um, and uh, it's just right in our backyard. So, and that is the only spot in our entire country that uh, is on the blue zone list. So anyway, let's get started with some food, but please do check those out later uh, if you're interested. Um, first thing we're going to make is some hummus. So most of you have probably had hummus. Hopefully you enjoy hummus. But I tried to come up with something a little bit different for today's hummus that we're going to make. And it's going to be a spicy carrot hummus. So I'm going to just uh, take my food processor and add some drained and rinsed garbanzo beans and about two cups of peeled, partially cooked carrots. And that was one can of garbanzo beans. And I'm going to go ahead and just add the rest of my ingredients right in there. I'm going to start with three cloves of garlic. This is one of the greatest garlic presses ever. You can put, um, you don't have to peel your garlic cloves. Most garlic presses do not do that. You have to peel them first, and they're kind of a pain to peel sometimes. So the peel just comes out cleanly. Yeah, one of my favorites. So I'm also going to add a half of a lemon. Actually, my lemon looks a little dry, so I think I'm going to use both halves in here. It'll make your hummus creamier. Creamier? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more you cook, your, the softer your carrots are, the creamier your hummus will be. So one of the things you might notice about the recipe, if any of you have made hummus before, there's a couple of things that are unusual. One is that I don't have a lot of oil. I'm not going to add a lot of oil. Um, hummus that you buy at the store, I think you'll find that the second or the third ingredient is going to be oil. And that gives it that nice creamy consistency also. Um, but I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm trying to eat less oil these days. So I'm just going to use um, a couple tablespoons of oil. Um, and the other thing is that traditionally hummus has tahini in it. Tahini is simply ground sesame seeds. Tahini has a little bit of a bitter flavor. It's not for everyone. Um, I'm going to omit it from this recipe, but if you enjoy that flavor, or you have some on hand when you go to make this, go ahead and add a big spoonful of tahini to yours. But I'm going to leave it out today. Um, what was I going to say? So I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of toasted sesame oil. And it's pretty easy to find, but they also sell it um, just regular sesame oil that is not toasted. I don't know if you can see this, but this has a nice golden brown color to it. And um, when it's toasted like this, it really has a rich sesame flavor. It's really nice. So it's a nice addition to our mix here. And I'm going to add about a teaspoon of ground cumin. And I'm going to add some sea salt. And some granulated onion. For those of you that have taken my classes before, you know that this is something that's in just about every recipe I create. It really adds that nice depth of flavor. Even when you're cooking or adding fresh onions to you know, whatever you're making, I also add onion powder, granulated onion. It gives it more of a depth of flavor. It's really a nice, nice addition. So the next thing I'm going to use is harissa. It uh, comes in spicy, it comes in mild, but it's a Moroccan um, condiment. And it's made with red peppers, spice, harissa, with an H, harissa. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I have a spicy one and I have a, a mild one. I'm going to use both today. I'm going to do about a spoonful of the spicy one. Actually, a big spoonful. And then I'm going to do a couple spoonfuls of the mild one. It really has a wonderful, complex flavor that it adds to the hummus. So I'm going to do, let's do three big spoonfuls of it. So if you happen to buy some of this, um, you don't just have to use it for, for this. Last night, we, uh, my husband and I had spaghetti, and we stirred some of the spicy one into our spaghetti sauce. And it added a really nice little punch of flavor. Is it available in a regular grocery store? Yeah, yeah. These particular ones I bought at Whole Foods. Um, I know they're available on Amazon, and I know most of the local stores here have. Um, but be warned, I mean, not every product is created equal. I've tried a couple of brands that I didn't think were so great. But um, these are great. If you buy one, you don't love it. Maybe try another one before you give up on it. All right. Do I have everything in there? I think so. Just going to go ahead and pulse this. I'm going to scrape the sides down a little bit. One more time, we're almost there. And I don't know if any of you sitting up here close can admire my cute little spatula that has Santa Claus on it. <laughs> this was on the clearance rack years ago at Target for 25 cents. And it's the handiest size. I use it all the time, even when it's not Christmas time. OK, it's ready. What I'm going to do here today is make an appetizer platter for the library staff. They are so good to me, and I love coming here and teaching these classes. And uh, they were very kind to me when I was very lonely and sad last year when I had to do all the classes via Zoom. So <laughs> this is for them. <laughs> if you use a, make it into a thinner consistency, like maybe add a little water, you can use a blender. Do you have a blender? Nope. <laughs> ah. Well, do you have a good friend with a food processor? <laughs> Yeah, the immersion blender, the kind you stick in a pot of soup. Yeah. yeah. No, that's not going to work as well. Yeah, if you make it a little thinner, I would just add a little, maybe a little water and a little bit more seasoning. So this is a beautiful, vibrant orange color. I'm actually thinking it kind of looks a bit like baby food at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> But once we get done adding a few garnishes, it's going to be beautiful and appetizing. So there we go. There's the first one. So all of the recipes today, as far as difficulty level, they're all on the easy side. They're simple. For the most part, the ingredients are all easy to find. And uh, I really think even if you're not a cook, you can throw these things together. So bear 
bear with me while I change gears here. And I'll leave these products over here if, after cl class is over if you want to look at them or ask any questions about them. They're available. So the hummus you just made, what would be the shelf life for that particular? About five days. Five days? Yeah. Yeah, the lemon juice helps preserve it. Um, but yeah. I have to say, life is busy, <laughs> yeah. and I always, it's one of those staples that I always have on hand in my pantry or cans of organic garbanzo beans lined up in a row. Yeah, I use them in so many things that it's just really easy to uh, open a can. Yeah. Not to say that I don't use dry beans or things sometimes, but... Life is busy. As for most of us, I think a little shortcut here and there is okay. If you want to cook them from scratch, that's great, too. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead. Um, I have some non bread that I bought at a um, local store. I'm going to just put that on my platter before I start adding more things to it. It's much better when it's straight from the toaster at home, but this is the best I could do today. I toasted it before I came. And let's see, maybe we'll just put these at each end. It's a uh, flat bread, Mediterranean bread. Um, it's just flat. It's cooked in a pan rather than like baked in the oven, like a, a regular bread. Um, pretty easy to find. However, if you are trying to eat a plant-based diet, um, a lot of the nons come made with buttermilk. So you have to read the label if that's important to you. Um, this particular brand from Trader Joe's, they have regular and they have garlic, and um, they are not made with buttermilk. To put those there. So the next thing we're going to make is an eggplant salad with a red wine vinaigrette. N double A N N A A N. In fact. Some lucky person is going to go home with a bag of it today. <laughs> but this is what it looks like in the store. Yeah, I, you can use it for making like an open face sandwich. I do that sometimes. Um, but it's wonderful just toasted and cut into strips and used to dip. not going to talk about calories. <laughs> We're going to talk about eating plants. That's all. Actually, everything today is very light and healthy. Um, I hope you'll join me in November when we do Americana. Um, I'm going to throw all concern about what you just mentioned out the window with that class. Yeah. We're going to make some indulgent macaroni and cheese. We're going to do meatloaf. We're going to do all kinds of things that, um, yeah. Just warning you ahead of time. All right. So what I like to do when I make a salad like this is just make the dressing in the bowl ahead of time, and then I'll just add the ingredients. So what I'm going to do is add a little vegan sugar to the bowl. So vegan sugar is sugar that has not been put through a gelatin filter to make it bright white. So it's a little brownish color, kind of irregular. Um, regular sugar does not contain an animal product, but an animal product gelatin, which is ground hooves, <laughs> is used to filter it um, to get that pure white. Flavor, um, color. 
So, yeah, or agave. Agave was, is great. So I've got um, the sugar, and I'm going to add some red wine vinegar. And we're going to add some salt and pepper. And you know it, some more granulated onion. No, not particular. They're all fine that I've tried anyway. So one of my biggest challenges when I do a class like this is I know everybody wants to take home a recipe, and I'm not a recipe person. I mean, I don't <laughs> use recipes. I make recipes up, but I'm, I don't measure at home and when I'm creating new recipes. So it's almost painful for me to sit down and try and uh, give you quantities. Um, but with that said, I mean, cooking, it doesn't have to be exact. Most things are pretty forgiving, and you don't have to, you know, there's a reason I brought a whisk. <laughs> you know, don't worry about exactly a teaspoon, exactly a tablespoon. In most cases, it's not going to get you into trouble to be a little bit off. Okay, I just want to whisk this until the sugar's dissolved. And now I'm going to add a little avocado oil. So I think you'll find that most Mediterranean food has olive oil in it. I used olive oil for years and years and years, and then I just, at one point, had, had had enough. Um, I just stopped enjoying the flavor of it. And also, now, new research shows that it's not a great oil to use when you're frying or heating it. It does break down. Um, avocado oil is sort of the darling of the food world right now. It has a very high burn point, so better for frying. Um, but it has a very light uh, flavor to it as well. And I, I don't want my food to taste like oil. I want it to taste like the food. So I think it's a great option. It's a little expensive sometimes, um, but a great substitution if the avocado oil is too expensive or you can't find it is grapeseed oil. That's also a great oil for frying. All right. What am I going to do with this? So now I'm just going to add my ingredients. I've got my dressing made. We're going to somewhere I have some eggplant. Eggplant, I find, is not a real crowd pleaser, but some people <laughs> like it. Who likes eggplant? Oh, all right. I am I'm surprised that I see so many hands going up. That's fantastic. So I was going to say, even if you don't love eggplant, this is a great way to prepare it. Um, I just cut an eggplant into small bite-sized cubes, put it in a mixing bowl, and toss some of the avocado oil until I've coated all sides of the eggplant cubes, and then added some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder, and then baked it at 375 degrees until all of it, uh, all sides were golden brown. And it's fantastic. It's flavorful. It's great. So that is the star of our salad here. I'm also going to add some finely sliced red onion. I'm putting this onion in here first because I want it to sit in that vinegar for a minute. It'll take some of the bite out of it. Sure. Yes. Um, someone asked if, um, if I like the Japanese eggplants. Yes, when I can find them, that's absolutely what I would buy. I find they're kind of hard to find in the valley. Um, I also like the Thai eggplants, the little round ones. Um, the 
American eggplant. This style of eggplant is what I used. It's actually my least favorite of the eggplants, but it's the one that you can find everywhere. And that is going to go to a good home today, too, some lucky raffle winner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and add some more things to fill out our salad. I'm going to do some English cucumber. Why an English cucumber? Because they don't have as much water and they don't have the great big seeds. So they're great for this type of salad. So there's our cucumber, and I have a large green bell pepper. So whenever you're going to cut something up that's kind of wobbly, give it a flat edge. I just took the bottom off the pepper, now it's stable, my knife isn't going to slip around, I'm not going to cut my hand or my fingers. always clean the pith out. My husband always leaves it in and it really makes me mad. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to make little bite-sized squares. So my knife, um, last time, oh, go ahead, sure. What kind of knife are you using? I was just going to bring that up because that was a question um, last time we had class here. It is a Hinkle knife, but the blade shape is called a Santoku blade, which is a Japanese shape. It's my favorite because I can do everything with one knife with this. I can finely slice a soft tomato. I can chop something big and heavy like a root vegetable, um, and it's a great little way to, I mean, it has the wide blade, so I often use it to help scoop things into the bowl, but it's called a santoku blade. Santo? Santoku. Oh, santoku. Yeah, um, and most of the knife companies have a santoku blade. So now we just need to add some tomato. It's going to give it some beautiful color. Well, um, the nice thing about the vinaigrette is that if you let it sit for a while, a few hours at least, it'll really flavor the vegetables nicely. But the longer it sits, because it does have eggplant in it, the eggplant's going to get soft and mushy at some point. Um, but the other vegetables are very sturdy and can hold up well a day, you know, a day in advance and they'll be more flavorful. So what you might do if you want to make it a day ahead is add your eggplant 
before you serve it. That recipe, well, it depends how you use it. If you use it as like a side salad or if you're just using it on a, you know, on an appetizer platter like this, um, I'd say anywhere from four to eight, just depending on how much. I mean, it's not, I don't think it's a standalone salad, like an entree salad. Um, if you did that, it'd probably make two servings. But I think it's just a really nice accompaniment to something else. So if you'd use a smaller amount. Just making sure the vinegar is on everything and trying not to beat up my eggplant too much. And you could, but it would be a very different flavor. The red wine vinegar adds a really nice flavor to it. So I, when I make a meal that, you know, how do I phrase this? What I think a good meal consists of, um, something spicy, something sweet, and something a little sour. So this platter is based on my palate, what I enjoy. But um, So what I've done is I have the spicy hummus. And this, because of the sugar that I added to the vinaigrette, is going to be sweeter. And then we're going to add some tabbouleh, which is sour. It basically has a lemon uh, dressing to it. So I'm going to go ahead, put these in the middle here. And then we'll move on to our next item. Okay. I did have a plan. I just don't remember what it was. <laughs> I want to use my same mixing bowl because it's clear so you can see it a little better. Okay. up my mess a little bit before I start a new mess. Just try and get the last little bits of the red wine vinaigrette out of here. And now we're going to start making our tabbouleh. So tabbouleh is based on this wonderful whole grain. And again, some lucky person today. Um, it's, you can find it called cracked wheat, or you can find it listed as bulgur wheat. Um, it's a really nice, versatile grain. It's a whole grain, really good for you, and it's really, really easy to prepare. All you have to do is put it in a bowl and pour some very hot water over the top of it and let it sit. And it'll soak up the water in about 15 minutes and you'll have a light and fluffy grain ready to use. So very easy. Do 
You certainly can substitute uh, quinoa. Yeah. I did not. I dumped a whole package in my bowl at home when I made this. So, but I think on your recipe, I did three three quarters of a cup. Yeah. All right. So one of the tips when you make tabbouleh is to make sure after you wash your vegetables that you get them very very dry. Um, tabbouleh can turn into a soggy mess if you don't. And the hardest thing to get dry is the parsley. So I washed this. I tried to shake out as much water as possible, and then I wrapped it in a paper towel to get even more of the water out. Um, really important step not to overlook, because you'll get a soggy mess if you don't. So I'm going to add a couple of Roma tomatoes. These are the Roma tomatoes, and the reason I'm using them is because they don't have as much water as uh, a standard tomato. So for something that we're not trying to make soggy, they're a great option. And I think a good tabbouleh is one where each little bite that you have, you get a little bit of everything that's in your tabbouleh. So I try and make all the little vegetables and things that I put in here, nice and small, so that um, there'll be some in every bite. Anybody made tabbouleh at home? Yeah? Did anybody buy it ready-made at the store? <laughs> it's all right. I forgive you. <laughs> Oops. in a little bit. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to add some English cucumber. And again, the English cucumber is um, the best one to work with because it doesn't have the water and the large seeds. Yes. Usually it's going to be the same thing. Yeah, the long skinny ones, they're usually wrapped in plastic. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add some fresh mint. And I think in the recipe I gave you, I said about 10 leaves. So mint really adds a nice flavor to it, so you want plenty of mint. So. If you find a mint plant that has teeny tiny little leaves, use more than 10. When I said 10, I had more something like this in mind, these large leaves. What if you don't like mint? <laughs> if you would like something else, like cilantro or no? Sure. You know, I like to say there aren't any rules in cooking. If you don't like it, substitute something you do like or leave it out. Yeah? That would be nice. My favorite way to cut these is 
a chiffonade cut. And all that means is that you take whatever you're going to cut, lay them flat together like this, and put them down on your cutting board and tightly roll them. And then just do a really thin cut. And they'll give you these beautiful little even strips. Can any of you smell the mint? Oh, yeah. Not a good thing in your case, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so now we need a little, that's actually not enough mint. I can just tell by looking at it. Let's do a couple more big leaves. I can never get it back in these containers without squishing it. How do they do it? I don't know. Oh, no. Okay, here we go again. There we go, that's better. And now I'm going to add some red onion. Sometimes when I make it, I'll add green onions. Um, just whatever you prefer. Getting there. Now all we need is our parsley. Do yes. It depends what I'm making. I use the curly parsley for tabbouleh because it holds up better. Okay. It's the leaves are a little more rigid yeah. and um, they're not going to wilt once the dressing hits it like mm -hmm. uh, flat leaf parsley would. So it just depends what I'm making. But I do recommend the curly parsley for uh, tabbouleh. Uh, <laughs> depends what they're making. I'm putting some sugar on some mushrooms to glaze them for our next uh, item, but um, I guess it just depends. Are you thinking about something in particular? So we'll talk more about that when I get to the next recipe, but um, those of you that have a copy of today's recipes may have peeked ahead, cheated a little, and know that we have a glazed mushroom salad with couscous coming up. Can you smell the parsley? Anybody? Okay, now we need to mix it up and then make some dressing for it. And the, the dressing is really, really simple. We're just going to use lemon juice, salt and pepper, and uh, a little bit of oil. And again, most people making this food will choose to do olive oil, but 
I've moved on to avocado oil, so that's what I'm going to use today. Okay, colorful, fresh, beautiful. The wheat in it makes it, or the bulgur makes it nice and filling. I could just eat a big bowl of that. I think it's tasty. So somewhere I have a lemon. Here it is. So I'm going to mix the dressing separately on this one. Can we sort of dress it at the last minute just before mm -hmm. serving? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because it will start to wilt, get a little soggy. So now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Generous amount of pepper. Some sea salt. Just gonna mix that a little bit before I add the oil. And my lemon didn't produce a ton of juice, so I'm actually gonna use the other half of my lemon when I told you I was only gonna use a half. I lied. Okay, that should do it. And now just a smidge of the uh, avocado oil. That should do it. What's your idea of <laughs> <laughs> well, a little of this, a little of that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, what did I say in the recipe? Can anybody help me out there? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're ready to finish out our, did I just throw some at your feet? I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You're going to go home with tabbouleh between your toes. <laughs> okay. we go. Yes. And that's I mean, Mediterranean food. It's full of color. It's fresh. It's light. So I'm going to add some cheater artichokes. Have you seen these artichokes in the little pouch before? They're so nice and easy. You don't have to drain the oil off of them or anything. They're just ready to go. And I'm going to just um, arrange them on the side of the hummus here. Uh, artichoke hearts, yeah, yeah. And I also have some cheater olives. These are from Trader Joe's. And I think I have one going home as a door prize today. And then one last touch to our platter here. I'm going to put some uh, sesame seeds on the, I don't know why this doesn't have a shaker top, so. Some black sesame seeds and some white ones. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, I don't know how, just richer, deeper, maybe the black ones, but delicious. So there we go. Library staff, um, there's an appetizer platter. <laughs> I wouldn't mind at all. Help yourself. Yeah, you're welcome to do it now. I need a couple of minutes to change gears here. Thank you. So just um, so you know, you can score huge brownie points with me if I see you at a future class and you say, oh, I made that recipe. <laughs> <laughs> and I also am available. I am very passionate about helping people eat more plants. And if ever I can help you with any suggestions, help you with a recipe conversion, anything like that, I am available via email. My email address is on the recipes that you're getting today. It's a food festival. It's not all food, but uh, I, how are they billing it? Yum Fest, they're going to have food, they're going to have live music, um, children's activities. It's going to be in the mall in Palm Desert in the parking lot. And I'm going to have a food tent there. It's October 15th on a Saturday. How am I doing on time? So I have a bad reputation at the library. I'm never quite able to use my hour exactly. You're at about 10 to 3, about 7 to 3. So. And then you kick me out? No, we don't kick you out. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't. So wash, mushrooms are very porous and they will soak up the water if you wash them in water. So the best way to uh, buy mushrooms is to buy, them, buy some that look very clean. If I have mushrooms that are dirty and have little dirty spots on them, you just take your dish towel, wipe them off. So we're moving on to the entree salad. I'm going to move this over here. And what we're going to do with our entree salad, I'm going to set it up before I cook the mushrooms. So what did I do with my stuff here? I'm going to start off with some mixed greens. And I'm going to arrange them on my platter. Why mixed greens? Why not just regular old lettuce? Well, 
It's beautiful, it's nutritious, you get a variety. I always recommend that people eat different colored fruits and vegetables. The different colors represent different nutrients. So if you eat a variety of colors, you're getting a variety of the nutrients that you need. So we're starting off with mixed greens. Now I'm going to add some cooked couscous. This is really easy to cook ahead of time. You just uh, bring some water to a boil on the stove. And then, uh, like today, I think I two cups of water. And then once the water boils, I added two cups of couscous, a little salt and pepper. And then you just turn the heat off and let it sit. And in about five minutes' time, it's ready. And you just fluff it with a fork. It's wonderful, sprinkled on a salad. Um, it's delicious, it makes the salad nice and hearty. I'm just making a little mound in the middle and that's where I'm gonna place the mushrooms once I get them cooked. And then I'm going to add some sliced cucumber and some heirloom tomato as well. Does everybody in here like mushrooms? Yay! <coughs> Use a lot of mushrooms in plant-based cooking. some tomato for color. This is a beautiful heirloom tomato that I, I bought a whole package of them at Trader Joe's for, I think it was only $5, and they're just gorgeous. I don't know if you can see this. Okay, so I've got my base for my salad. I don't know if you can see that. And now we're going to add mushrooms. So when you buy mushrooms in the store, what do you look for? Clothes, yes. You don't want to buy a mushroom if the cap has opened yet. And what does that mean? It means that the underside has not started to come away from the stem yet. These are really fresh, and I know they're really fresh because the caps are fully closed and they don't have any brown spots. So that little test holds true for just about any kind of mushroom. Some of the giant mushrooms like a portobello, that's different. They're, the caps are already opened. Um, but in general, look for something with no brown spots, something that doesn't have a lot of dirt on it to make your life harder. And just, uh, if you do find some dirt, again, just use a dishcloth. You don't want to wash your mushrooms. It's whatever you use them for, they're going to be watery. You want them to soak up the other flavors of whatever you're using them with. So I'm just going to slice these. Start putting them in my pan here. And if I'm because they look so fresh and nice. But any kind of mushroom 
will work. Um, and I encourage you to try all those fun, exotic looking ones that you sometimes see out there. Although, I don't know if any of you have any recommendations for me, but I have a hard time finding anything but white and brown mushroom. Whole Foods has a little variety sometimes, but has anybody else had any luck in the area? The farmer's market, yeah. Yeah. I was just visiting my parents in the Northwest, and wow, they have a whole giant section of <laughs> exotic mushrooms in their stores there everywhere, just easy to find. Okay. If I was at home and I had my sink nearby, I would cook these in water just to have a little less oil in my life. But I don't have any water with me today, so I'm going to cook them in oil. Medium high. These will cook very quickly. Butter's okay. Vegan butter, especially. The thing with mushrooms is you think you're starting off with a lot of mushrooms, and then as they cook down, you wonder where all the mushrooms went. So my pan looks pretty full, but it's not my first time using mushrooms. I know I'm going to need these in here. I didn't know if there was an overhead of the pan, if you could see the mushrooms or not. Oh, you can! Look at that. You guys are great. Okay, I'm going to season these fairly heavily. Lots of salt and pepper. A little granulated onion. I'm sorry. I don't have a reason. It's just my favorite spatula. <laughs> and I've had it a while. <laughs> when my daughter was about 15 or 16, she left it laying on the stovetop and turned the gas on. And it survived. It hasn't broken in half yet. So my loyal, faithful spatula. Yes, that's right. We've been through a lot together. <laughs> Can I say something? I'm sorry, it's harder to hear. Would you say Oh, yeah, you bet. Um, 
This is a fabulous pan called an Always Pan. Um, I watched them for a couple of years in social media. Everybody was raving about them, and I thought, eh, I don't know. They're kind of expensive. I don't know. Um, but I finally broke down and bought one because I liked the color of green that it came in. And we use it every day in our house. It's so practical. It um, has a great nonstick finish. It's a little bit deeper than a typical saute pan, so you can actually do you know, brothy things in here. There's enough room. It has a pour spout on each side. I, just, I really love it. An always pan. Always. No, it's, um, what is it? I think it's aluminum, and it's lightweight, too. I think it's aluminum. OK, so my mushrooms are nearly cooked. I'm just going to sprinkle some. I know it sounds strange. I know I had a question earlier about sugar and the mushrooms, but trust me on this. It's a good thing. I'm going to just uh, lightly sprinkle all of the mushrooms with a little bit of sugar. And then here we go. Here's the fun part. Hold on to your hats. Balsamic vinegar. You should be able to smell it shortly if it hasn't come your way yet. So what happens um, is a little bit of sugar will thicken the vinegar, make it a little bit syrupy, so it'll coat your mushrooms. And the vinegar is so acidic and sour that they're not overwhelmingly sweet. It's just, um, it's how I glaze mushrooms. Works really well. Can you smell it? All right, while those finish up, I'm going to just quickly chop some green onion. What's that? No, I don't have a favorite brand. If you make this recipe, make sure you don't use balsamic glaze, that you use balsamic vinegar. OK. So it's now um, syrupy, a little syrupy. It coats the mushrooms. And they're all set. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to take my pan over here put these beautiful fragrant mushrooms on top of my couscous. I love my always pan. Um, I use a lot of cast iron. I have a big cast iron soup pot that I use for making soup. Um, but honestly, this is so versatile. It's about all I'm using right now, unless I need to make something you know, a larger quantity than this will hold. These are only available online as far as I know. I don't think you can find them in any stores. OK, so I'll finish this off by just sprinkling some green onion. And then your favorite salad dressing will go beautifully on here. I have a nice um, plant-based creamy dill that uh, I brought to serve with this one today. But uh, really, anything goes. But uh, I, don't, I hope you can see that. Um, we made it not too late. So we're ready to raffle off some door prizes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. So any other questions I can answer? How much protein is in that? Because it looks like it's just Plenty.
protein is in everything. And when it's all added together, most plant-based eaters get more protein than they need. It's really not hard. I promise. The grains, the whole grains, mushrooms, everything has some. I promise. <laughs> you look very skeptical. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. There's, um, if any of you want to learn more and you have questions like that, um, she was wondering about protein content. Um, there's some, a couple of really great videos on Netflix that are great bases of information. Um, one is called What the Health, <laughs> and then the other one is called The Game Changer. Yeah. And they're both informative, they're not preachy, they're just, they're easy to watch, they're not painful, I promise. And uh, it answers a lot of those questions. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other questions? Oh, can I have a bite? <laughs> Do you work at the library? <laughs> should, we, should we raffle off the, the yeah. giveaways? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to pull them and then, or I can pull, start pulling them? How about you pull them and I run them out okay. to people? Okay. So, do you want to give people the first, let them choose what they want? The first, first, or we're just going to we'll assign them? Want. Okay. We'll assign. Okay. All right. So, lucky ticket holder, I'm just going to read the last three digits. That should be okay. Yeah, four, three, four. Yeah, yay. <laughs> Enjoy. Four, four, five. Four, four, five. Four, four, five. Four, four, five. <laughs> Marinated artichoke. <laughs> Okay, ticket 481. 481. Cuckoo. <laughs> and ticket 450. Is this all one? Yes. It's all one? No. Okay. They're separate. <laughs> Whole grain bulgur wheat. And ticket 461. A bag of parsley. <laughs> sorry. Let's give them a picture. Sure. Okay. <laughs> TJ felt sorry for you. You get toasted sesame oil as well. <laughs> All right. And I hope this one goes to an eggplant lover. <laughs> 470. 470? Well, anyone? 470. Going once? Yeah. Okay. You still have a chance to win this great egg, eggplant. Here we go. Four, four, three. Oh, that's my eggplant. Oh. oh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, TJ. Any other questions? Anybody going to go home and make tabbouleh? No? Okay. Let's hear it for Chef Shannon. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks thank for coming, you. everybody. Thank you.